Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing tonight? Well, it is early. It is 9, 12 p.m. And I am running to the grocery for a few things. So I thought, you know what? Why don't I just vlog for like 20 or 30 minutes before I go to the grocery? So that is what I'm doing. I think the grocery closes at 11. I'm hoping it does so that I don't get there too late. And Alex is at home and he is watching the Umbrella Society and then we're gonna watch some show together. Then I might lay down for a little bit. Um, he'll probably go to bed when I lay down because um, he said he has an early day tomorrow. So anyway, how was your day today? Was it good? Did you have a good day? Are you watching this in the morning? So how was your night? Did you sleep well? Uh, I had a good day so far today. I got up and um, I had a good day, but my day did not necessarily go the way that I had planned. Has that ever happened to you? So I got up today and um, I went to my training. Well, I did a bunch of stuff around the house and then I went to my training and um, my trainer like really worked my butt off today and uh, she always has me like warm up by doing, oh, I gotta charge my phone. She always um, has me warm up by doing these things called, um, oh, what are they called? I was just showing Alex in the living room. <laughs> he was laughing at me. Inchworms I do and lunges and arm stuff. We do a bunch of like, uh, she has a bunch of things. She has me do a bunch of things to, uh, what do you call it? To, um, warm up before I get started. And then she had me do all kinds of craziness today. And um, I used the, the, what do you call it? The kettle weights. And she had me do a lot of stuff with that. And then I had to do these like weird kind of set up things. And anyway, it was a good workout. And then after that, so I was on the north side of town and I wanted to get coffee, A. And B, I had to go to the vet to go and get, um, turn this down because this might start playing my audiobook, and it did. Um, I had to pick up Pee Pee's food because he now is on this, um, what do you call it? Uh, food that's for having, re like, you know, kidney disease. So there's a special, we had to try like all those different kinds of food. I showed him on here, right? And then we had to pick the one that he liked the most and it was this stew. So I wanted to go by the vet since I was up there anyway and I wanted to, cause my uh, gym is on the north side and I wanted to uh, go by the vet and see if they had that food cause if they didn't, then I was gonna have to order it. But I wanted a coffee from Starbucks and I didn't have my coffee like cup with me. And I was like, oh, well, I was gonna drive home and go get it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go to Starbucks and I'm just gonna buy a new one. Like, you know, this is the, the more I have, the more I'll use and things like that. And then Alex can use them too. So I went to the Starbucks, it's right by my gym, and they all they had were like the clear plastic ones. So I was like, okay, this is not what I want. So I went to the other Starbucks, and this is the cup that I got. Is it not so pretty? The price tag is still on the bottom. It was $24.95. Isn't that pretty? And I actually drank all of my coffee today. Um, somebody, I put this on my Instagram picture, or Instagram story. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. I'm trying to use my stories a lot more. And somebody said that they were trying to buy this for their son and there it says Starbucks right there. And that they couldn't um, find a red lid. I think it's really cool. It's very kind of like Pride Day, but it's also like just iridescent and you know, pretty. They had a gold one too, but I was like, this one's more fun. I think like these that they put out are limited edition and they make a bunch of them and they put them out. And then what happens is people buy them and they sell them on Etsy and things like that, but they shoot up in price. Like they're like tw the one I got, the other one I got, the black one, which they still at the store. So I don't know why it's so expensive, but it was, mo it was more than this, but it wasn't what I paid for it. I paid like almost $40 for it. So what they do is they make them and then they're limited edition and then they go out and they people buy them and they sell them on Etsy and you know eBay and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try to start buying more of them because I really like them. Yeah, so I did that and then I went to the vet and they had the kind of food that he liked. And so I bought a 12 pack of it, 12 case of it. Um, of this, he likes to stew. So, um, but I got four, I got a 12 pack of it, of the stew, and then I got 
four pat four uh, cans of the pate in case like this because sometimes he's difficult and he won't eat the stew. Like what he's doing now is he'll eat a little bit of his food and then he'll go over and try to eat Tucker's because I think he thinks it's different food or something like that, well, which now it is, but before it wasn't. So he was being difficult about his food, but tonight we put it down and he ate about a third of it and then we took it up because I didn't want Tucker or Boo Radley to eat it because it's a special food, not to mention it's special expensive. It's super, super expensive. It was uh, $49 for 16 cans of food. <laughs> lot of money and it, apparently he's not supposed to be having well the vet was supposed to call me today and she didn't call me back because um it was late in the day anyway and the, the woman didn't know if she was going to end up coming to that office but she's like if she doesn't come in today she'll ha i'll have her call you tomorrow but if she comes in today i'll have her call you today because i wanted to find out about the new medicine that we're on uh how long we're supposed to like try it out number one number two um like, if he can have treats and easy, ch like, the easy cheese for his medicine and stuff like that. The woman at the counter was, like, she's really nice. They're so nice at our vet. She, I mean, they all know me by now, right? But she was, like, um, she said, um, I don't think that she's going to want you to have him have other things because he's supposed to be on a really strict diet, which makes me feel kind of sad for PP. But she's, like, you know what some other people do is that they buy, like, a bag of the dry food and then they give the dry food the the kidney disease food, the dry food as little treats, but he doesn't have hardly any teeth, so how's he supposed to do that? I don't know. So, we'll see. I know he loves treats. Pee-Pee's addicted to treats. He loves them. So, yeah. So, um, that was that, and then there was, like, another guy in there, um, it was so funny because they were all like kind of like fawning over him. He was like in um, scrubs and stuff and he was real tall and good looking. And they were talking, the one woman was talking, he like walked in right before me and the woman was talking to him about like the doctor and she said, are you a doctor too? And he goes, no, I'm a pharmaceutical sales rep. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, you know half my friends are pharmaceutical true story I cannot tell you how many friends of mine that I have that are pharmaceutical sales reps but I don't know why I thought that was funny anyway it was a good day and then I came home and I started making videos I well I trimmed my beard because my beard was driving me crazy and I trimmed my beard um, and then I was gonna take a shower but by that point it was almost like five because I've been running around doing all this kind of stuff and Alex was coming he was gonna be done at six and coming home so I was like, um, I think I'll just try to get these done really quick and then take a shower tonight after I lay down if I do that. And um, yeah, so Alex came home. I was having a really difficult time getting my video uploaded um, on my main channel. It kept on getting demonetized and all this other stuff was going wrong with it. And it just like, it didn't want to publish and I didn't know what was wrong with it. And so I went back in and I had to like cut out part of it. And, um, and then I was like, I don't know if it makes sense. And I watched it back and I was like, I guess it does. It's just really not that deep, but anyway. And I wanted to do a review video today, but I did film videos on my Peterism's channel which I'd really missed the last couple days filming those. And then um, I did my Reading Rush wrap-up reviews on there too. I did um, that, bit. well it's actually uploading right now because the other video was taking me so long to get done. And then, um, yeah, I think that's it. Went to the casino last night, like you know, met Valerie, we had a good time, we played all night long. I did really well, um, like right away. And so I hit like $300 or something like right from the get-go when we walked in. And so I just kind of played on that all night long. It let me play up and down, up and down, up and down. I was like on my favorite, mach one of my favorite machines, these heart uh, lightning strike machines. And I just played up and down, up and down all night long. It was really fun. And Valerie was in the machine next to me. And I told her, I said, I think you should play this machine because the progressive is high. The progressive, like it only goes to a thousand. It'll go over a thousand. Like sometimes people don't hit it, but like it won't add, you don't get any more than a thousand. Um, but it was at like 952 and 
she played it all night long. I felt so bad. She like did not hit anything. Like she just kept on putting money in it and she wasn't hitting anything. And I was like, why don't you move if you're not hitting anything? She's like, no, I feel like I put so much money in this now. I, I don't want to move. And I was like, okay. And so she just kept on staying there. So literally, it was like real late and I was like, I gotta go. I go, I got my training tomorrow and stuff. So um, I left with $600 which like hardly ever happens. And so I got up and um, I was like, I'm gonna leave. And so we were sitting at these machines and like to walk out was like here. And so like, as I was walking out, I heard her get a bonus and I was like, and it's these coin things that come up. You have to get six of them. And then if you get six of them, then you like push, like every time you push it, you get like, try to get more and it has dollar amounts on it. And um, I was like walking away and I heard her go, I heard someone going, Peter, Peter and like I turn around she goes I hit the major she had hit a thousand dollars so I was really excited for her <laughs> she was like yeah it took me a lot of money to get it back so at least I got it back but she I asked her she left with twelve hundred dollars last night so she did good last night well we both did good last night I guess yeah so it was fun I had a good time last night and then I've been listening to my audiobook a lot. I've been listening to The Last Town, um, Wayward Pines by Blake Crouch. I am three minutes and 36, uh, I'm three hours and 36 minutes into it. It's six hours and 56 minutes long. And um, so I'm almost halfway through the book. So I'll probably finish it tonight. If not tonight, then the latest tomorrow. And then I'd really like to finish on the come up in July, but I just don't think that that's gonna happen. We'll see, but I don't think it's gonna happen. But at least if I start it, then I'll like have it done like at the beginning. Oh, and then I sat outside tonight because I still haven't finished that stupid book, The Quickie by James Patterson, and I read 100 pages sitting outside. So I got a lot of that done. And I got to get on those supermarket reads. But I really enjoyed it. It was, like, I don't love the book. The book is just not that great. But it kind of reminded me of what I loved back in the day about getting these James Patterson books, no matter how bad they are, that I would just, like, sit there and just, like, tear through the pages. Like, I mean, I literally, like, read just page after page after page. I just sat there while I was uploading these videos and sat on the front porch because Alex is watching TV. And I had such a good time. And um, I was like, damn. And I like looked and I was like, I just wrote like a hundred pages sitting here. So, well, going in and outside, but, um, so I'm hoping to finish, I'm hoping to finish, hoping, I'm hoping to finish that in the next couple days and then start one of the other supermarket reads. And then I don't know if I'm going to add one in August or not. I'm going to try to catch up on the ones I have. I probably won't read Murder House. I just was not in real love with the James Patterson the way that I thought I would. I don't know. It just wasn't that great. But Mel read Camino Island, which is by John Grisham, and she said that she thought that was really good. She really liked it. And then I have a Sydney Sheldon book on there. And then I was going to add a Michael Connolly book for August, so I might do that. We'll just have to see. I need to look at it and actually see how long it is, because if I do, it's going to be the book I take to Vegas because it actually takes place in Vegas. So I might do that. I've been kind of going through this thing lately where like not all the time, like I'm on social media, obviously, you know, I just posted a picture on Instagram, but like I find myself like reaching for my phone, you know, to like get on social media or look at Instagram or Twitter or whatever. And, like, the other day I was talking on here about how I was on Facebook and stuff like that. But, you know, like, in the last 24 hours, it's weird. Like, I'll go to, like, get my phone and then I'll be like, there's nothing I really want to see. Like, I noticed this last night when I was at the casino. I was like, there's not really anything, like, I need to see on there. Like, it's almost like I just go to it because I don't, like, just as a go-to, you know? But I was like, I don't think I really have anything on there that I really care if I see or not. You know, it's, I don't know. I just was like, I don't really care to be on social media right now. It was weird. I'm not usually like that. I'm usually pretty tied into it. I kind of go back and forth and have this love-hate relationship with social media. I don't know why. I don't really ever hate it. I shouldn't say that. I just feel tied to it more. Oh, the light. I just feel tied to it more sometimes. Um, I couldn't tell if it was too dark in here or not before, but now it's like way too dark without the light. 
I, sometimes I just feel too tied to it. You know what I mean? Like, especially like when Alex and I are sitting around our house, I just feel like, like he's always got his phone like in his hand, like when we're sitting there watching TV and stuff like that. And I don't care. I mean, we're watching a TV show. I mean, the level of, you know, interest he has in the show is on him, not on me. I could care less. But like for me, it's sometimes like I want to be like, you know, focus on a TV show. And then if the, I try to stay off my phone because if I'm like, sitting there watching, I'm like, I'm not really watching this show. What am I doing? You know? So yeah, it was a good day. I talked to my sponsor forever. And, um, we talked about hanging out soon. She's supposed to, I thought she was having a party this next weekend, but she's actually, it's going it, to, she said she was going to maybe have the 17th, but then she was like, if not, she's trying to get a band to play for it. And she was like, if not, she was like, I'm going to do it the following weekend. She was like, but that's when you're going to be out of town and I don't want to have it when you're out of town. She said, unless there's not any other weekend that I can get a band to play. <clears throat> and then she's going to the Bahamas. So she's like, I don't know when I'm going to do it. And I wanted to have it this summer before Labor Day. I was like, I don't have, don't worry about, you know, whether or not I can be there or not. Like, that doesn't matter. So, but that was nice of her to think of anyway. So, yeah, we had a good talk. We had a fun time talking today. It was nice. And then I called Tanya. I think it was during her nap. And then, um, after I talked to her, she, um, or I called her during her nap. She didn't answer. And then, like, she called me back when I was filming my videos and I couldn't talk to her. So, after I talked to her, I said, Tanya Jean Appleston, prettiest girl I ever seen. This Walgreens right here, like, there's never anybody in the parking lot. Like, there's never cars there. I'm like, how do they stay open? Do you ever wonder that with, like, places? Like, I swear, like, I have uh, this friend of mine, and every time, like, we mention a place, like, it doesn't matter what it is, okay? Back in the day, it was Noble Roman's Pizza, she'd always say it about. My roommate used to always say this, too, though, about Noble Roman's Pizza. But no matter if it's Noble Roman's Pizza, a pizza, snow sh a snow shack place, a Walgreens, it doesn't matter what restaurant in the world, a, a gym, a tanning spa, whatever. Anytime it's, like, you say... I wonder how that place stays in business. Where was the place that we were at that it was really... This Thai food restaurant Alex and I go to. There's actually one car in the parking lot. That was weird. Um, this Thai food restaurant that Alex and I go to, there's literally never anybody there. And I was saying it to her, and she's like, Mafia runs it. I was like, what? She's like, oh, I'm pretty sure that the Mafia runs... And she's, like, dead serious, too. She's like, I'm pretty sure that the Mafia runs that place. And I'm like, do you know? She's like, well, I mean, I've heard. And I'm like... <laughs> But it's, it doesn't matter what place you say. Like, you could say a tanning bed place, you know, like, I don't know, let me make up a tan, you know, the tan center or something. And she would be like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'd be like, that place is always dead. There's never anybody in there. And she'd be like, oh, I'm pretty sure that uh, that's the mafia. They run that. <laughs> really? Well, what about the subway next door? Oh, they own that too. I'm like, okay. I think they own the whole block, whole, the whole uh, strip mall. Do you ever have friends that crack you up like that? Like the friends of mine? <laughs> like, this is what kills me, right? I have so many friends like this. And I just cannot call them out on it. I did a rant video about it, but I just cannot call them out on it. I just play along with it, right? But we'll be out to dinner, and their kids are literally like... You know, Carlos and Liliana are really good about this. I like tease them and stuff. Like, at least they stick, you know, kind of with the theme. But, like, you know, they'll have a son named Johnny or something. And you'll be out to dinner, and they'll be, like, real serious about it. You know, and they'll be like... Uh, and we'll be like, so, you know, like, Alex and I'll ask this couple, what have you guys been doing lately? Oh, we've been really busy because of Johnny. You know, and Johnny's five. And you're like, oh, really? Well, why? And they're like, oh, well, I mean, he's on a traveling baseball team. 
Oh, he is. Yeah, and it's a lot of weekends. I mean, I we did, we had no idea that you know this kind of commitment, but this is what they need. You know, it's structure and athletics are really important. And you know, one day he might get a scholarship, and you're like, he's five. Okay, seriously. And I understand. Like my brother-in-law is like both my nephews have private coaches. Okay, but anyway, um, so. Like, our friends will be like, oh, yeah. And then, like, you'll go through this whole thing, right? I've talked about this on here before. I must have because it drives me crazy. And you'll have, like, a half an hour conversation about Johnny's baseball schedule, of which you could absolutely care less about, you know? And then, like, you'll go and you'll have dinner with him again, like, eight months later. And they'll be like, oh, my God, we haven't had dinner in forever. We should catch up and go to dinner. And you'll go to dinner. And now Johnny's playing soccer, right? And baseball's not the game anymore. And you're like, well, what happened to baseball? Like, you guys were so involved in that, like, traveling. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you don't want to do baseball. Baseball is way too competitive. There, there's not enough spots, you know, in high school. You know, what you want to do is soccer. And then you see them like a year later, and they're like, oh, no, we're doing rugby now. Rug rugby is where it's at. And it's always both parents, too. And I'm like, okay, you know, 10 years ago, I can remember you standing in a bar being like, shot, 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 shot. What happened? Okay, now you're talking about Johnny's baseball traveling schedule. Like, what happened? I guess I grew up like everybody else. <laughs> it's so funny though, isn't it? You know I'm telling the truth. You all know, out, you guys out there know somebody like that I'm, that I'm talking about. You know you do. I love this lip balm so much. Delia is the dealio. <laughs> Delia is the dealio for sending these to me. I love you, Delia. Thank you. It just occurred to me that I will probably never meet Delia in my entire life, and yet she watches videos about me that I talk about my life, and she knows all this crap about me, right? But I don't know anything about Delia, and yet she sends these chapsticks to me, of which I use all the time, and I talk to my friends, and I'll say, oh, this person that watches my videos, Delia, she sent me these lip balms, right? And then my friends will say, people actually send you things? And I'm like, yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? And they're like, do they really? And I'm like, yeah, it's really sweet. So Delia, just so you know, I'm thinking about you, okay? Not just on camera. <sighs> chop, 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 chop. Do you guys remember that song? It was so bad. That song was so bad. Everybody! And I remember whenever it would come on, people in the bar would go crazy. I'd be like, yep, it's my time to go. I gotta go. <laughs> It's time to go. Alex, you can take an Uber? Okay, see you later. I always loved that time of night because then I could go home and I could drive through fast food and then I would come home and I would watch like family food, family food, family feud while I sat there and ate something. Kick off my shoes, put on my sweat shorts and call it a night. <laughs> oh my gosh. I need to wash my hair. I need to buy new shampoo and conditioner is what I need to do. I keep on thinking I'm gonna go to Lush. I can't go tomorrow because I've got my meeting tomorrow night. And um, I'll be running too late during the day. Although, okay, so here's the deal. I'm going back on my program tomorrow. Alex is gonna wake me up when he leaves in the morning. I'm gonna park behind him. I usually park on the street sometimes, but I'm gonna park behind him so that I have to get up to move my car so we can get out of the garage because I let Alex have the garage. Oh, it's going to stop. Hold on. So anyway, I let Alex have the garage and I park in the driveway or on the street. Um, and uh, he's going to get me up. So I have to move my car and then I'm going to go have my first meal for my program at that time. And then I'll be like, you know, up and ready to go. And um, I'm not going to get up at 7.30 or 8 in the morning. That's not happening. But I'll have had my first meal and then, and Alex is doing it for a week right now, too. We're both going to do this healthy living thing. I think he thinks if he does it with me, it'll help me, which it really will. So, which I think is sweet. Um, so then we are, so then I'm going to, because you know, you have to eat a meal every two and a half to three hours. So then I'll be on schedule 
Um, and then I'll get up and then I'll have my second meal and then my day will be going strong. Then I go into tomorrow having one full day on program and I won't be struggling because I'm struggling tonight. I'm like really having a hard time. I've been trying to like eat well all day today and it's just like I am so hungry right now. I've got to have something. So I'm getting ready to go to the grocery store to see what I can have. I'm like, I looked at him and I said, I can't have program stuff tonight. I just can't. I said, I haven't been eating it. I haven't been doing it all day. So like I want to eat something like, you know, semi-healthy or whatever. I kind of want some hummus and I know that hummus isn't super healthy, but that is really kind of what I want. Maybe some hummus. I don't know. So I have this candle warmer in my kitchen that somebody sent me. Let me just tell you those candle warmer things. I thought it was so corny when I got, when it, they sent it to me, I was like, I have never seen this thing. This is not gonna work, right? Okay, can I just tell you, I swear by that candle warmer thing. I wish I had five of them in my house. First of all, they don't burn your house up. They don't, all that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, it is so fantastic, this candle warmer. It is the most fantastic thing in the entire world. If you're looking for a gift to buy somebody, because I don't think most people would buy a candle warmer, what you do is you put the candle on it. It's in my kitchen, you've probably seen it. You put the candle on it, and then the light is over it. So the light heats it from the top. So, but let me just tell you what is so crazy about this, right? It smells, I'm not even lying to you, 10 times stronger than if you actually lit that candle in the house. Like, it smells so much stronger than burning the candle. And um, so I have this apple cider one, and I had it on today in the kitchen. I've been feeling really fallsy. Honestly, I would love some chili right now. Chili sounds good. Chili? A summer food? <laughs> a little throwback to vlog from a couple days ago. But anyway, um, it feels real fallish outside. I don't know. It was raining today. It was just nasty outside. I was like, it feels kind of like fall outside. But anyway, I, um, so I had that candle burning and I was like, I told Alex, I said, something with apple sounds good in it. And then I was like, you know what sounds really good is like, like crayon apple, cranberry stuffing, which I don't even know where I would get that. I'd have to make it from home scratch. I'd have to make it from home scratch or something. I don't know how to make home uh, stuffing, but I do know how to uh, make a good box of Stouffer stuffing and it's so good. And I know everybody's like, oh, that's trash. You shouldn't eat that, but it is so delicious. Listen to that old truck. I bought a new backpack today too. Carlos and Liliana got me a $25 gift card for Amazon and for my birthday. And so I've been wanting to buy like, because I carry this with me everywhere, but I carry it. I don't wear it and I don't want to wear it across my chest because I'm fat and it looks stupid. So I wanted like a little backpack. I honest to God, you guys, I got online and I looked up these Gucci mini backpacks. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna buy one of these little Gucci backpacks. I think they're cute, $1,200. They are so beautiful though, but I, don't, I just don't see myself carrying a little Gucci backpack every day. I don't know, maybe I'll treat myself, but maybe sometime. I'd like to see them in person though. I, I've, I, if, Cause if they're like this big, then no, forget it. But I bought a North Face, Berkeley mini backpack in navy blue and it was $49, $49.99 and then I used my $25 gift card so I got it for like $23 or something like that and I got it primed so it'll be here by the first and I'm really excited because it's just like a little backpack that I can throw my stuff in and I can you know throw my camera in there like when I'm vlogging throughout the day and I can throw a book in there and like pens and all my lippies and all that kind of stuff and I can just have it in there and it can be like a little purse that I carry around with me you know. I'm real excited about that. So I got that today. And I got the dog food. <laughs> oh, my land. I said that last night to, uh, when I was sitting there next to Valerie, I yawned. I go, oh, my lanta. She goes, my lanta. I said, yeah, like my lord, but my lanta. It's funny, haha. Uh -huh. <laughs> she didn't get it. <laughs> My vlog right now, just so you know, I started uploading it, it is 9.41. I started uploading it at like five o'clock and it still has two hours to go, over two hours to go. So if it got uploaded really late tonight, you guys, I'm really sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Um, 
our internet was slow as hell today. I don't know what is going on with it. I actually uploaded my Peter Rism's video by my phone. On my booktube video, I was gonna do the same thing and I just looked and it's like an hour and 49 minutes to upload like a 15 minute video. I don't know what that's about. The vlog took forever. Um, the drama videos I did from my phone, but then like I had to go in and it just was a mess. It's just been a mess of uploading videos today. If I honestly, if I had uploaded videos the last two days, because I'm like, I don't want to go more than two days without uploading video. I really didn't want to go more than a day without uploading videos because I loved it and I have things I wanted to you know, do videos about. But if I hadn't gone two days, I think in all honesty, I probably, oh my God, did I just get princess parking? Thank you. Um, I probably wouldn't have done videos today because I was so frustrated with the uploading of it. I would have just saved them for tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna go into the grocery store and I will be back in just a little while. Bye. Okay, I'm back. And it is many moons later. It is 5.27 a.m. And um, thanks to Boo Radley, you are getting this vlog footage and I also finally posted my vlog. My vlog um, took literally like, it took like six or seven hours to upload yesterday, I think. I don't know what the problem was with it. But anyway, so I'm sorry that you got yesterday's vlog so late. Um, Alex went to bed at like 10 o'clock and um, I was watching an episode of Orange is the New Black, the first episode. I'm trying to get into it. It's making me really sad to watch this year. I don't know, the whole thing is just very sad to me and um, I'm only one episode in, so please don't ruin it for me. But, um, so I was like, well, I think I'm gonna lay down with you for a little bit. I was like, I couldn't believe he was going to bed so early. I was like, I'm gonna lay down with you for a little bit. And he goes, okay, I said, just let me watch like 10 more minutes of this episode. So I watched like 10 more minutes of it. And then I um, went upstairs and I lay down. And I mean, I crashed out. And I woke up probably about a half an hour ago. Because Boo Radley would just started barking for no reason. I don't know why. It kind of scared me. He looked up while well, I was having this weird dream, which I'm going to tell you guys about. I just really weird dream that you know like when you wake up and you have a dream and you remember it right at the beginning but then it kind of lingers well this dream linger didn't linger it's just like I kept on remembering I kept on remembering more and more of the dream like as I woke up it was so strange and it was kind of the context of the dream was strange too so but anyway um so he woke up well he started barking and then I woke up and so I took them out. <sighs> and then I posted my vlog. I finally finished, it was finally finished. And um, now here I am vlogging. I really wanted to finish this Wayward Pines book tonight, so that's not gonna happen. And um, so I'm kind of over, but whatever. I'll finish it tomorrow. I was looking at my books to see which books are short that I could maybe listen to in like a day or two. And I have Carrie Mora, which is Thomas Harris, the guy that wrote Silence of the Lambs. He has a new book that just came out this year. And I really wanted to read it when we were um, in Miami. I was actually just like, before I left, I was like just wanting to see. I'm really wanting to go to like Fiji or you know, one of those places for like my 50th birthday. I really don't want to do the flight. Um, I don't love to fly and that's a long flight. It kind of freaks me out to be honest with you. Um, so I was like looking at it, it's expensive, but it's not as expensive as I thought it would be. water tastes so good. So anyway, this is my dream that I had. Are you ready? I have the heat like pumping in here because the windshield was frosting up or fogging up. You know, somebody the other day told me to 
like blast cold air on it and I've been doing that but it doesn't really work just for a little bit but it's so hot in here um 70 degrees outside at 5 30 in the morning 5 31 so I had this dream and in the dream I knew I had died like Alex and I had died together and there were like other people that had died with us. I think Tanya was there at one point. And we were in this big hotel and it was like a convention casino hotel. I don't even know how to explain it. It was like a hotel that's like attached to like a casino. Like it was like a big convention hotel. And, um, Like, we, like, they had this big, like, uh, escalator that went through, like, the main part of the hotel. But, like, I knew I was dead in the dream. And, like, Alex and I were talking, and I remember, like, us being in the room and saying, like, well, at least everything is free. Like, we don't have to worry about it. I just remember us talking about how we thought it was weird that everything was free, and it hadn't really hit us yet that we were dead, and, um... So, like, we, like, went and looked at the room, and we went and looked at, like, there was, like, a beach, and it was, like, this resort that was, like, built, but it wasn't, like, finished yet. Like, none of the rooms had, like, toiletries and towels in them and stuff like that. It was really weird. I don't know how to explain it. And then they have, like, all these, like, gift shops that you could go to, and you could get, like, snacks and stuff. But it was like we were on a vacation, but not. But like, so you could go to these gift shops and get snacks. But like, you know like those rolls of cookies that you can get? Like they would have those, but it would be like one cookie in the pack. And I remember Alex and I tried these like, these chip things, those Takis trips or chips or whatever they're called. But they like tasted off. Like everything was off. It didn't taste right. And then, they had this thing where you could like get into a car and like act like you were going through a drive through at Taco Bell, but it was like not really like you were going, I don't know how to explain it, but you weren't really going through it. And so finally, like Alex was like, I'm gonna go back to the hotel room and I was like, okay, well I'm gonna walk around for a little bit. I wanna kind of find out what's going on. And I was like looking around at all the stuff that was in the hotel and um, I just was kind of like panicked. Like I was like, this, I can't, like this isn't what I thought it would be like when you died. Like I didn't think it would be like this. And I was talking to somebody like in the hall and it was like somebody that worked there and they had come to find me and they said, I was like, why is everything off? And they said, you're not supposed to be here yet. And I was like, what? And they're like, you're not supposed to be here yet. Like, everything's not finished for you guys yet. Like, you're you're here way too early. And so nothing's the way that it's supposed to be. And then, like, I woke up, okay? Like, it was so weird. And, um, and that was when Boo Radley started barking. Like, but he was, like, barking, like, in, legit in real life. It's the weirdest dream. Like, it totally lingered with me. If you ever saw the movie Defending Your Life, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. The movie was so good. All these people out this early running... interested if you get up at five in the morning and you're out the door running are you like dead tired by like 8 p.m. like I would be like exhausted by 8 p.m. so anyway that was my weird dream that I had I do 
do wonder what it's like when we pass. Like, I... I believe in a very vivid afterlife, and whether it's just that I'd, I'd like to believe in that because it, you know, gives me hope that there's something later, or I don't know, you know? I mean, obviously none of us know what happens when we are gone. Actually, Recursion talks a lot about that, that book about with Blake Crouch, about like when people's lives flash before their eyes and they see like, you know, blinding lights that they think is like, you know, going to heaven and stuff like that, that that's actually like, like neuropsis like going off in your brain and, um, it's actually kind of like your brain is shutting down, like that's what's happening, it's not necessarily that you're having this near-death experience, but I don't know, I kind of like to believe in that, you know, I got kind of like weirdly obsessed with that for a while, there was a book by that Betty J. Eady, I think is her name, there was a bunch of books that came out for a while about like near-death experiences. this period where I was just like so deeply afraid to die and like I became kind of like weirdly obsessed with reading everything about it. I went through a long period like that. Almost where I could kind of have, I could kind of drive myself to have panic attacks. Like I'd be laying in bed at night and I'd be like, what if this is it, like, forever and ever and ever and ever, and once you're gone, it's just, like, there's nothing, like, forever and ever and ever and, I mean, forever, you know, and I kind of, like, weirded myself out. I would do that all the time. Like, from, like, high school to, like, I mean, even after I got sober. And I don't think about that as much today. I think kind of because my attitude's a little bit like, well, what if, what if, I mean, there's, what can you do about it, you know? I kind of wonder sometimes if that, you know, like the older I get, there's another person out with their dog this morning. They're all with their dogs this morning too. I kind of like the older I get, it kind of weirds me out even more, you know, like, it's like, it, it's by the time that you become okay with it, and by the time that you decide that you're going to actually, like, live your life and stop being afraid, not of dying, but of just being afraid of, I don't know, enjoying your life. I know that sounds crazy, but it's like, for so long, I was so consumed with, like, being worried about this or being worried about that, and I'm like, you know, it just, you, you kind of figure things out. I don't know, my cousin Caroline, she just, like, has this bit, like, this piece about her. She always has. It's just, like, she never really gets too stressed about anything. She's like, you know, you'll kind of figure it out, you know? And by the time that I figured it out, it's like, my life is more than half over. You know, it's weird to me. I think about, like, my mom's high school reunions. Next year's my 30-year reunion. You know, I... I don't even know if we're having a reunion, but, like, most people don't have more than, like, 30-year high school, I mean, after 30-year high school reunions, it's, like, people stop kind of going to the high school reunions as long as, I mean, as much as I know. I don't know, it's weird, it's, like, I'm kind of, like, at that point where it's, like, you know, it's so crazy to me, because I have friends of mine, like, I see on Facebook, I say this all the time, I have friends that I see, like, on Facebook that literally just had kids, like, in the last five years, right? And then... So they're not thinking about being gone tomorrow. And I really think it has so much... Like, I think if my mom was still here, I just don't think I would think that way so much. You know, and that my dad is, like, going to be 79 this year. And I feel like if I'm going to do some living, I need to do some living now, you know? 
really enjoy it. And because I wasn't like really like watching anything that would make me like have that dream or you know like usually like if I have a kind of a weird dream I can kind of like track it back to something I also had this dream it was weird Tanya and I had just been talking about this girl that we knew the other day and um, I think Tanya sponsored her for a while she was like 18 or 19 and we hadn't talked about her in a long time. Tony was like, oh, I, so-and-so said something about, I saw her. Anyway, I had a dream about this girl, and I was like, she, she's like in her 30s now. But anyway, I had this dream about her, and, um, like, in the dream, we were, like, reading this letter where she had changed her will or something. This girl doesn't even have any money. I don't know why I would have thought that in my dream, but she was, like, changing her will and she was, like, leaving me all this money to, like, it was, like, a set amount. It was, like, three grand, but I had to use it on something that, like, would really make me happy. And Tanya in the dream was like, I wonder why she left you that money for that. She, like, had this, like, whole thing written out in the will about, like, that I was always, like, worried about taking care of, like, business and not spending money on myself, which isn't true, so I don't know why, I don't know, I don't know, I just have weird dreams tonight, you know? Sometimes you ever think, like, it's that old Charles Dickens Christmas Carol thing that it's, like... It's because you eat right before you go to sleep and then you have weird dreams, you know what I mean? I think that sometimes. Do you hear those birds? They're pretty, aren't they? I think that, you know, has probably a lot to do with it. It's like I eat and I go and I sleep and... But if I went to bed at 10.30, I mean, I fell asleep right away. 10.30? I already slept six hours. I feel kind of wide awake right now, which is weird. And then I asked Alex to wake me up when he left. So that I could have my first meal for my program. So I could be like on my program today. into that show, The Umbrella Society. And it looks so weird to me. It doesn't look like anything I would really like, honestly. But he started it because all these people are telling him to watch it. But he's like halfway through it or more. He watches, God, he binge watches series like nobody's business. And I said to him tonight, I said, is it good? And he goes, yeah, it's real different. It's different than I thought it would be. He's like, but I really like it. He started watching it because everybody, you know, he watches all of those, like, Marvel superhero shows. He loves those shows, which I don't know where that came from. That is so strange to me. Like, two things. But anyway, so people told him, well, if you like those, you'll like the Umbrella Society. I think that's what it's called. Two things about my husband that's really surprised me through the years. Number one is that he went through this huge phase where he was, like, obsessed with video games. Like, obsessed. Like, he would come home from work every day, and he would just sit in front of our TV. I remember, because he used to have these leg warmer things that he would wear, because my husband has the sexiest legs in the world. And I used to think that they were so sexy. He would wear, like, these... He'd wear, like, this hoodie and, like, shorts, like, uh, sweat shorts, and then, like, these leg warmers. And he would sit there, and he would play, like, video games. But he would play, like, Mario Kart. He was, like, obsessed with Mario Kart. And I remember I would, like... He would, like, finish it, and I would, like, go to the grocery store and 
um, like get us frozen pizzas or whatever, and then like I would stop by Best Buy and I would like buy him like a video game, and just like to surprise him, you know. But he went through this period where he loved playing video games, and then literally like as soon as it came, it was gone. Like one day he just was like, he was like, oh my brother and I we used to play video games all the time, and he was really into it. And then, like, the next thing I knew, I mean, it lasted literally, like, a month or two. And then, like, the next thing I knew, he was done with it completely. <laughs> and, um, that's the first thing. The second thing is this obsession with, like, the Marvel comic movies and shows. Like, he literally watches every single one. I mean, every single one. Like, all of them. He watches all of them. He loves all the movies. You know, all the X-Men movies, all those movies, he loves all of them. And I'm like, where did this come? Like, I don't understand where this came from. Like, he didn't used to be like this at all. He used to always love, like, comedies, like, hilarious comedies. But now, well, he watches so many movies anyway. You know, like, he'll, uh, like, he's constantly, like, I don't know, over the course of a weekend, while I'm, like, doing other stuff, he'll, like, if I'm, like, writing or making a video or whatever, he'll watch, like, two movies. Well, I'll be, like, what did you, like, I'll be, he'll be upstairs, and I'll be, like, filming videos or putting videos up or whatever, and he'll be, like, oh, I just watched two movies. I'm, like, you did. He was, like, yeah, I watched, you know, Mary Poppins Returns and Dumbo or something. He watches so many movies and TV. I don't know how he does it. But I'm kind of jealous of it. Like, right now, um, I'm trying to finish Grace and Frankie, and then I want to really get into Orange is the New Black this week, because uh, Wentworth comes on this week as well. The thing is, I just have a hard time sitting there and just watching show for show for show, unless it's like I really literally cannot turn it off. Like Stranger Things, like I couldn't turn it off. Like I could have watched the entire season in just like one setting because it was so good. Grace and Frankie, I'm actually on episode five. And, I don't know, it's so, it just all of a sudden became very hilarious to me. Like, the, all the jokes in it. I was like, oh my god, I was like, watching something and I was like, this is hilarious. So, I just have episode 6, 7, and 8 for that. So, it's an hour and a half that I have to watch it. See, I, I always see everything as a chore or as a duty. Why do I do that? Instead of just enjoying it. I never have been and I never will be the person that can just sit around and watch 15 TV shows in a row. That will never be me. And, and it just it never, 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 never will be. But I used to watch more TV than I have. I like to binge watch shows. If it's something that, you know, like, if Alex and I watch together, like Making of a Murderer, that was really fun to, like, binge watch that first season together. And, um... We were going to binge watch Stranger Things together, but I was ready to watch it. And he was like, oh, I'm in the middle of such and such. And once, I think Riverdale he was watching. And he was like, when I finish Riverdale, then I'm going to watch it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to wait three days. I'm ready to watch it now. So, we watch Pose together. And I think it comes out Tuesdays or Wednesdays. And always, I thought it was on Thursdays. And it, by, the time that th by the time that Thursday rolls around, we have it already recorded. So, we watch Pose together. What else do we watch? We watch a lot of the Housewives stuff together. The Real Housewives of Dallas is coming back in September. I kind of like them. Ooh. That's like one of the this like one of the seasons or the towns that I I like. I like New York. I like well, I like all of them. I don't, the only ones I don't watch are New Jersey, uh, the Potomac. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, it's gonna stop. Hold on a second. Yeah, I don't watch New Jersey. I don't. I mean, I have with Tanya, but Tanya watches all of them. I mostly watch. I watch Beverly Hills if Alex is watching it, but it's not my favorite. I love Orange County and New York. Oh, Atlanta is my favorite. Atlanta is my hands down favorite. I think they should do a Real Housewives of Las Vegas. 
I'm kind of surprised they haven't. And they tried to do a Miami one, but apparently it didn't go off real well. But I think a Miami one would be really good, too. Or Chicago. I think a Chicago one would be great. shows and we watch it. Well, we always watch RuPaul, but it's not on right now. <laughs> uh, we watch Project Runway. But the last two seasons, I've kind of like stopped watching it halfway through because it just wasn't that great to me anymore. I feel like sometimes with these shows, like I was talking to my trainer today and she is like, do you watch The Bachelorette? And I was like, no. And she's like, I need to find somebody that watches it so I can talk to them about it. And I was like, aren't they on like their 300th season? And she was like, their 25th. What is going Why is that plane flying around up there back and forth? Um, she was like, their 25th. And I was like, are they really on their 25th season? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, I just poked myself in the eye. <laughs> and um, she was like, but I love it. And I mean, it's kind of like what happened to me with like The Amazing Race and Survivor. It's like, is it seriously the same? Like, it's so boring to me. You know, like, with RuPaul's Drag Race a little bit, I think what's interesting to me is that, like, I've always been interested in that kind of stuff and, like, in drag and, you know, notice. Like, I, I know a lot of the queens that make it on the show long before they make it on the show. I've watched their Instagrams. I've heard about them, things like that. But, like, on Survivor, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I mean Tanya still watches all that stuff. I can't believe it. Well, Survivor, I think, got canceled. But Tanya still watches all of that stuff. Big Brother, is it even on this season or this summer? Like, is it on and I didn't even know it? Like, I feel like I, if, if Big Brother is on right now, I did not even know it. I think it's on right now. And I didn't even, it didn't even come up or anything like for me on my DVR. And I usually watch that every season. Last season, I don't think I watched it. I don't know. It's like, I just can't get into that stuff as much anymore. And it's kind of sad too. Like, you know, with, um, I think like with Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and those kinds of things, people really aren't into um, TV shows as much as they used to be. I feel like I saw the other day, like a meme of somebody from Big Brother and I was like, I've never seen this person on Big Brother before. And I was like, I wonder if it's from like this season and they're on right now, which would make me really sad that it likes, I usually always watch like the first episode. Well, if it started, it's probably not been going on that long. It's only probably been on, it usually starts like the first week of July, I think, or, and it goes through September. It's not, what is that, 90 days? So July, August, September. It starts maybe the middle of June or something. <clears throat> worked at Domestics at Macy's for a while. Was it Ayers when she was there? Or was it Macy's? I feel like it was Macy's. And Domestics is like sheets, towels, all that kind of stuff. So we all got nice towels that year for Christmas. <laughs> 
But anyway, Tuesday morning is a place where they always like have that stuff on. It's like all. It's like a TJ Maxx, but it's like exclusively for like sheets and towels and things like that, I think. I actually haven't been in there in years. I don't know, but that one's like a big one that was over there. Ooh, Einstein bagels. <coughs> they are open already. Look at that. Time to make the bagels, I guess. Do you know what sounds really good? Is a big glass of orange juice. Like with ice in it. I don't know why that sounds good to me. I was telling Valerie the other night that there's a Denny's over there. I was like, um, when we went to, uh, the last one of the last times I went to Denny's, I used to always get Moons Over My Hammy. I loved them, okay? And if you don't know what a Moons Over My Hammy is, it's basically like sourdough bread with egg, and then they put ham on it and all kinds of cheese. It's delicious. And then I would dip it in ranch dressing or ketchup. It's so good. So anyway, but I was really hungry for a Moon's Over Miami, but I'm a vegetarian, right? And so I said to the waitress, she was really a surly waitress, sour and surly. I said, can I get um, a Moon's Over Miami, but with no meat on it? And she goes, you want a Moon's Over Miami with no meat on it? And I go, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what I just said? And she goes, so you want a, gr you want a grilled cheese? And I go, yeah, I guess I want a grilled cheese, add egg. It was not good. It was not good at all. the same way the last couple nights. Um, what is it today that you'll be watching this? It's Tuesday, Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a, I hope you guys are having an amazing Tuesday, unless you have other plans. And, um, but don't. Have the most today, uh, don't have other plans. Have the most amazing day of your entire life. Take some risks today. Do something fun. Really enjoy the day. Life is not a dress rehearsal. Don't any of us know how long we're going to be here. We need to enjoy our lives while we're here and healthy. Do something that will make you happy today. If you don't have anybody else to spend the evening with tonight, get a tub of ice cream. <laughs> That's what I would probably do. So anyway, go out to eat by yourself somewhere. That's something I taught myself to really love doing, was going out to eat by myself. I used to hate it, I was terrified of it, but now I kind of 
I don't have no issues doing that. I mean, I wouldn't go to like some really busy, I probably wouldn't go to Cheesecake Factory. I don't know, I might, I might. If I was hungry enough, I would. Anyway, all right, and um, so anyway, I will, I hope you guys are having an amazing Tuesday, unless you have other plans, but don't have other plans. Enjoy your day, make the most of it today. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Um, you are important and you are worthy of being loved by others. And look at yourself in the mirror every single day. Make sure that you do it and you say, I love you. I love you every single day. And remember to pass it on to somebody else. Tell them out throughout the day how much they mean to you. Um, and even if you can't say those words, even if those words are scary to you to say, you can say to somebody else, you know, like, do you know how important you are to me? Do you know how much you matter to me? You really make my days better. And um, I think it's important for us to pass it on to other people, to let people know how much they affect our lives in a positive way. And I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you. Bye. Love ya.